Trust Once Lost. Chapter 33, Far From the Tree. Well, we were gonna have apples for breakfast, said Applejack. That's fine, I said. But you told me you don't like apples. I mean, yeah, I said. But it's not like they're poisonous. Applejack sighed. Sweet Pete, I want you to enjoy your food, not just choke it down to spare my feelings. To be honest, I really wish I hadn't told you. Applejack raised an eyebrow. Why's that? Because now you're going to have to make different food, or know that I don't like the food, and both of those are going to be... bad? I don't mind at all. Yes, you do. Would I lie? Applejack questioned. I mean, sure, it doesn't bother you now, when you're thinking about it in the future. I replied. The resentment will come later, when you have to make me special food just because I don't like apples. Which is something you can't even understand. You'll probably convince yourself that I'm just saying that to be difficult. But you won't want to tell me because you're not sure. And then you'll feel guilty for it about thinking bad things about me. Green, said Applejack. That's not gonna happen. Why not? Because if I had doubts that you were being honest, I would tell you. And we would talk about it. Said Applejack. I'm the honest one, remember? I felt kind of silly. I was assuming Applejack was going to react to the situation in the same way I would. Okay. Now, what do you want for breakfast? Don't say bacon, don't say bacon, don't say bacon! Uh, can you do eggs on toast? Sure can. Thanks. I tried to sound happy, but I couldn't. As much as Applejack said she didn't mind, I just couldn't bring myself to believe it. I was still giving her extra work by being difficult for no good reason. It wasn't like she didn't have enough work already. With my poor hoof grip and my lack of magic, I couldn't even help her with a farm work. What's wrong? She just had to be so damn perceptive, didn't she? Or maybe I was just easy to read. I couldn't tell her I felt useless. Then she would feel bad that I felt useless. And there would be nothing she could do about it anyway. I'm fine. If you say so. After the third time I'd refused Apple Bloom offering me an apple-based food to have with my breakfast, Applejack gave me a nudge. Honestly, remember, Sweet Pea? I, uh... I grabbed at my glass of water, intending to stall by taking a drink, and only succeeded in tipping it over. Fortunately, it had been mostly empty. Damn it, now she's going to think I did that on purpose as a distraction. I don't like apples! I blurted out. Apparently Big Mac was as quiet in his movements as he was in his speech. Somehow, in the moment I had my eyes screwed shut, he'd managed to grab a tea towel and walk around next to me to dry the spill. I nodded my thanks to the stallion, and he wordlessly acknowledged with a nod of his own. But how can he not like apples? Asked Apple Bloom. You were eating them just fine yesterday. It's not like they'll kill me. I explained. I just don't like the taste. But how can you not like every kind of apple? Apple Bloom pressed. You can't have tried all of them! Aren't they all kind of similar? As it turned out, I had a lot to learn about apples, and Apple Bloom was eager to teach. There were over a dozen different varieties currently growing on this farm alone that apparently tasted completely different. I agreed to at least taste each variety at some later date, but only after Applejack made sure that I was doing it because I wanted to, and not just because Apple Bloom had pressured me into it. I couldn't help but smile. That had gone way better than I'd dared to hope. I really needed a haircut, or main cut, whatever. My hair was too long, and it was a pain to deal with. Having it brushed wasn't entirely unpleasant, but needing some pony else to do it for me reminded me how useless I was. I just stood there and tried not to think about it making sure to not move or fuss to avoid causing any additional hassle. The brush tugged at my mane. Yesterday, it was just uncomfortable, but now I couldn't get the feeling of wrongness out of my head. I'd felt that being a pony was something abstract, but being aware of my new anatomy made it painfully real. This is wrong. I'm not a horse. I'm not a little girl. But I was, wasn't I? I slowed my breathing. I let my eyes unfocus. This is happening to my body, but I don't have to pay attention to it. All I have to do is stand here and not react. Something orange waved in front of my vision. You alright? I'm fine. I shuddered involuntarily. Do you not like it when ponies are touching your mane? 
I sighed. It's not like I have any choice. If something's making you uncomfortable, I want you to tell me. Said Applejack. I can't brush it myself, and it needs to be brushed. I explained. If it were up to me, I'd just cut it off, but I doubt any pony will let me. But your mane's lovely. Why would you want to cut it all off? Because I just don't want to deal with it. I replied. Look, just forget it. I shouldn't have said anything. Crane. Look, it's fine! I huffed. I'll get used to it. All right. Applejack looked unsure. Well, I take it you're not ready to go back to school yet? Why does she have to make it a question? I can learn faster without being at school. It's all right, sweet pea. Said Applejack. I was gonna have to pick you up from school early today anyway, since we have an appointment with Dayglow. Damn it. Applejack was gonna tell them about the soap thing. Okay, so I cannot tell them. My story won't be consistent with Applejack's, and they were definitely going to interview us separately. I needed to figure out how to preempt and downplay the situation, but not in a way that made it look like I was coached. With my eyes closed in concentration, I didn't see Winona approaching, but I could smell her doggy breath as she attempted to lick my face. I hugged her. Maybe I wouldn't be able to see her again after today. As much as I tried to tell myself that I shouldn't get attached, that I had only been here for a few days, there was a pain in my throat. The idea of losing the small amount of stability that I had in this new life was devastating. I was being stupid. This body was being stupid. I shouldn't care about this. I'll be in my room. I try to keep my voice even. I was hoping you could help me with some work on the farm again today. Said Applejack. I'm... I began before shaking my head. I'm supposed to be at school, so I should be studying. We both know I won't be any real help. Well, you're just learning the ropes. Countered Applejack. I don't expect you to be an experienced farmhand on your first week. If I'm even here that long. Diglo said this was only a temporary placement. I explained. We shouldn't plan on me being here long enough for that to matter. I could see Applejack was a little taken aback at that. Good. If I could put some distance between us, maybe the separation wouldn't hurt her as much. Sweet pea. Don't worry. I told her. I'll just be in my room, reading my books. I'm not going to get into any trouble. I think Winona wants to play with you again today. I could do without the guilt trip, AJ. She's known me for two days. I'm sure she'll get over it. Applejack sighed. Are you gonna be alright with Granny being in charge while I'm gone? It's fine, AJ. I said. You worry too much. There were too many fields of magic. Which was to say too many fields of study, not literal magical fields. This was going to get confusing. I'd need an acronym just to remember the names of all the types of magic. Projection, negation, animation, divination, alteration, wards, dimensionalism, conjuration, transformation, illusionism, medical magic, combat magic, mind magic, soul magic, and dark magic. Alright, let's simplify. Medical magic, combat magic, and illusionism are fields of study, but not separate types of magic so they can go in a different list. I'll just have to remember to include them if someone quizzes me. P-N-A-D-A-W-D-C-T-S-M-S-D. Ugh, not enough vowels to make something pronounceable. Okay, let's chunk them. Projection and negation. Alteration and transformation. Animation and conjuration. Wards and dimensionalism. Mind and soul. And divination. Hmm. Put that in with wards and dimensionalism. So? P N A T. A C W D D M S Purple Newt AT AT Walker Armor Class White Double D's Make Soup A purple newt with the armor class of an AT AT Walker and white double D breasts is making some soup. That was a mental image that would be hard to forget. P N A C A T W D D M S Projection Negation Animation Conjuration Alteration Transformation Words Dimensionalism Divination Mind and Soul. Also, medical illusion and combat. Mic. Microphone. So I guess the purple newt is stirring the soup with the microphone. Those were all the legal forms of magic. 
The textbook didn't explain much about dark magic beyond warnings to not look into them. There seemed to be the implication that just seeing the information could do some kind of unspecified harm. A cognito hazard, though they didn't use that word. There was a certain thrill to knowing dangerous things that you weren't supposed to know. In Equestria, I might have to be more careful with that impulse. Of course, without access to the internet, I'd have to ask for books about things I wanted to learn about. Asking for books about dark magic seemed like a poor idea. So, figuring out whether dark magic was a literal cognito hazard or just a metaphorical hazard and that someone who knew it would be tempted to use it was a question that I would have to approach carefully. After skimming through the modern mage, I quickly discovered that while there was a section on constructing or deriving spell formulae, it didn't have the kinds of practical casting instructions I needed to develop my own magical abilities. Because, of course it didn't. Unicorns learned magic while they were in Magic Kindergarten, and the level of this text made it clear I was intended for a unicorn beginning their post-secondary education. Or whatever the equivalent of that was here. I needed to find a book about how to instruct foals in developing their magic. A themology book about therapeutic exercises for patients with injuries or disabilities that affect their casting ability. Or a book that was intended for actual foals. I sighed. I reached for my saddlebags and considered how to classify them. The shrinking effect on the books was either dimensionalism or alteration. Considering the effect was only affecting the books. It would have to be altering the books into smaller versions of themselves, right? But if that was the case, why did their weight also decrease? Alteration only rearranged matter, so their mass should be unchanged. I needed a book on physics right now. I'd stupidly assumed that physics was still the same in this world. I really miss the internet. Maybe I could just study in the library so I wasn't limited on how many books I could have on hand or on hoof. I pulled out the first aid book. At least this was something I could commit to memory without needing more books for context. There was a knock at my door. Come in! I said without really thinking. Granny Smith entered the room and I immediately considered several reasons why that might be. None of them rose to the top as the most likely. I didn't know why she was here. Rather than anxious, I just felt resigned. How's it going, dearie? Good. Did you want a snack or something? No thanks, I'm good. Granny almost left the room, but she sighed and turned to face me again. You're so different than the other foals I've raised. Granny explained. I'm just not sure what to do with you. In what way? I asked. When Applejack told me she was bringing a troubled foal into our home, I thought what you needed was stability, consistency, and discipline. Said Granny. But I'm not so old I can't admit when I make a mistake. The memory alone gave me the sensation that there was still residual soap in my mouth. I thought about how to word my response to assuage her guilt. It's fine, really. I said. You were treating me like you would your own family, and I couldn't ask for more than that. That's what I mean, said Granny. Where's the fight in you? Where's the youthful energy? I wanted you to remember to not use bad words, not to scare you into hiding in your room all day. Time to try a bit more honesty, I guess. I took a deep breath to calm my nerves. I'm not afraid of you, Granny. I explained. I'm afraid that when Applejack tells full services that you punish me by washing my mouth out with soap, they'll move me to a different foster home. I think Applejack is becoming too attached and that she won't cope well with that. They're not going to take you away just for something like that. Honestly, they probably will. I felt tears welling in my eyes. I'm sorry. I, I, I shouldn't blame this on you. You didn't mean for this to happen. Please leave the room before I start crying. You shouldn't be sorry for things that ain't your fault. Granny sat down on the bed next to me, her joints creaking along with the bed. I've lived a great many years and I've learned a thing or two about regrets. When something bad happens, sometimes there's a lesson to be learned, and sometimes there ain't. I've seen that way my granddaughter looks at you. She's not gonna give up on you. Not ever. So don't try to push her away. It won't make it any easier when the time comes. I don't know what to do. I whined. I don't want to lose anything else. Thoughts of everyone I'd left behind in my old life. 
The people I'd tried to distance myself from, I couldn't get them out of my mind. It was pointless to think of them. I couldn't go back. When you know something bad's gonna happen, you have to make the most of each moment you got left. Every moment wasted is another regret, said Granny. She stared off into space for a moment before sighing. I'm sorry, I've gone and prattled on. I was remembering something else. She must be remembering her daughter, or no, her son. I couldn't remember his name, but AJ's mother was Pear Butter, so the father must have been her son. Now, enough moping around, said Granny. Let's go do something. I'm not moping, I'm studying, I said in exasperation. All right, but I expect to see you out playing with your friends this afternoon. Being inside all day ain't healthy for a young filly. It's nice to know that there isn't a grudge between those two, because man, grudges suck. Anyways, let's get on to our cheerful donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Star630, Badass Waffle, Only One Things, Rural Ryan, and Iron Sky. Magic 109, Jack TF, Dark Star Raiden, Narles, Black Minar, Pastel Sky, Salsa Rollins, Stu Hexer, Brother Mordred, Omicron Library, Runeside 9052, Will, Chris Twinkie, Rise, Soul Shineman, Louis G8, Chancer Crest, Fix Mokade 69, Bobcat GGF, Murder Princess, and many more beautiful people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and love life to the fullest.